why that would be okay for you to continue to expose yourself to that man after even one time, let alone 5, 10, 15, 20, year after year after year, year. why was that okay with you? It wasn't okay. What was more important to you than protecting your daughter? It wasn't. I called the cops, and they came. I ran over to the neighbor's house and called the cops. But you stayed. Yes, I She's stayed. She's asking the question, what was more important to you than getting her away from an abuser? She just wants to know what she came in second to. A second to him killing her and me. But look now, we got away and nothing happened. Well, but I wanted to hear that. Are, are, are you saying that you felt like I'm trapped here, I can't get out? Yeah, because I felt like if we'd left, he was coming after us, which many a times he has. And, but you had the police there to help you. They just took him off the premises, and then I knew I wasn't safe. So before they even got around the corner, he's sneaking up the backyard and back in the house. And so you call the police again, right? There was no reason. They don't do anything. Up next, uh, you might not believe where Tammy worked um, at the time her daughter was being abused. And it really makes her daughter wonder how on earth she could not have known what was going on. We'll be right back. My mom definitely knew all the warning signs, but when it came to seeing it in her own home, she just turned a blind eye. This February. At age 19, I was married to the prophet of the FLDS people. This 85-year-old man who has 64 other wives. A former sect member confronts her polygamous father. My father condoned my marriage. How does that make sense to a father to marry his daughter off to the crypt keeper? Plus, was this soldier falsely convicted? You had a hand to put in my son in jail, possibly for life. Have you ever made false allegations prior to this? Yes. I have. He's this father killing his child. You have an addict for a daughter and you're giving her money. Are you telling me that you don't know she's buying drugs with it? You took her to a drug house to get it. And a family brutally slaughtered. Police have arrested the 16 year old daughter. You know that she planned this, right? For the first time. They practically decapitate your mother, shoot and stab your brothers to death. The daughter speaks out. You needed them out of the way for a reason. What was it? Whenever we went to court and I had to testify, I specifically asked that my mom was not allowed in the room. I had to sit out in the waiting room. She wasn't ready for me to hear everything that he had done to her. A part of me wanted to focus on putting him away. And if I knew she was in the room, I might focus on her and get angry with her when I shouldn't be angry with her. I wanted to be angry at him. Tammy says no matter how hard she tries, Aubrey will not accept her apology. Aubrey says from the age of 8 until 16, she was sexually abused by her stepdad. She says her mother was never around to protect her. Now, Tammy says she was busy working two jobs and going to college at the time and had no idea of what was happening at home. The thing that I hold the biggest grudge against my mom for is that while this sexual abuse was taking place, she actually worked in a group home for sexually abused girls that were my age. I was a shift supervisor that planned group therapies. A lot of the girls were in gangs. It was a different kind of sexual abuse. None of the girls that I worked with, I don't believe, had any close family members do that. They were in foster cares, and that's when a lot of the abuse happened. My mom definitely knew all the warning signs. She worked with girls like me, but when it came to seeing it in her own home, she just turned a blind eye. So you say it was a different type of abuse, so you weren't necessarily sensitized to this happening in your home. Yeah, I would never have guessed anything like this would ever happen in my home. What's the number one sign of sexual abuse? Cutting. Okay, but that... You saw it. You told me they were scratches from riding four-wheelers. On my wrist. No, you didn't have them on your wrist. You I had them on my wrist. I was washing the dishes one day and he said, what's that? You had them on your shoulder. 
on my arm. And when I asked you <coughs> what was going on, you said, I got hit with a branch on the four-wheeler. I said, well, do you want me? We need to talk about this. And you said, no, I'm going to stay with him. And you made me leave. You asked me if I just wanted to talk to him because you felt that I was closer to him. Yeah, because you <clears throat> always were. You always never wanted me around at all. You always kicked me to the curb. You never wanted me there. Because I was mad. You should have saw. Were you jealous of her relationship? Not jealous that way. It's just like I was working all this time and going to college and I wanted a family and it just seemed like it was her and him and then I was just thrown to the wayside. So you were jealous? Huh? You, you can jealous. say yes. Well, not because you did. You told us yeah. that. That wasn't my word. It was your word. You told us when we interviewed you said I was jealous of their connection. Yeah. Because I didn't have it. You said early in your marriage, you started seeing warning signs that things weren't right. True? Yes. You said it was his idea to homeschool her in the seventh grade. Yes. And your comment about that was, quote, it was the end of my life. Abuse used to occur at night, but now he could do it whatever he, he could do whatever he wanted to me because he had you home I could never leave the house she said your ex wouldn't let you talk to the school principal no and you just figured he knew best even though she begged to go back to school he was telling me that if she was going to go back to public school that there was going to be somebody there that was going to rape her that these guys wanted to do things to her because she was a cheerleader. You said that after you learned about the abuse, Aubrey would, wouldn't, quote, let me get the cops involved. Yeah. Did you need her permission? Huh? I absolutely felt I needed her permission because I felt like I left her down all these years and I wanted her to make the decision on what I was going to do because what? I was going to call them and she's like, Mom, please don't, please don't. I want to do this. I got to do this. What was, what, was, um, what was his criminal past? He was uh, in prison for assault on a police officer. But he told you it was just an accident, misunderstanding. Him, him and his family also told me that, yes. Would you have ever left him if she hadn't done what she did? Yeah. Well, you hadn't before. I know, but... She says you would have never left him if she hadn't done what she did. But you'd still be with him today. I asked her many times, Aubrey, because when he had killed our dog, I wanted him, I wanted to leave. And, and she said, Mom, I think he's going to change. Killed your dog? Yes. Again... Red flag. No, but no, no bells go off. At this time, I was... She's begging to go back to school, no bells goes off. He's killing the dog. You, you, no bells go off. I mean... At this time, I'm working towards getting... Because he had me to believe that I could never make it on my own. That my family wanted nothing to do with me. That I was worthless. And I just figured if I could get my degree do what I had to do. When I graduated, I could financially take care of her and I without my family. And, and you're wanting her to believe you did not know that a price you were paying was her being served up to a predator. And you don't believe that. All right, let's take a break. Next, were there more warning signs Tammy missed? Aubrey says yes. We'll hear about it next. You're the one that doesn't remember. I do. Do you think I wouldn't take a freaking bullet for you? Obviously not. I would. Obviously not. The end of my freshman year, I started developing a plan to leave. That was the biggest step in my life, and I'll never forget that because I fought him off and waited for him to pass out. And I packed my bags and waited until he left the next morning.
I did not tell anybody where I was going or if I was going. I just left. I don't recall Aubrey running away from home. I remember moving Aubrey back up to my parents' house so I could get things done that I needed to be prepared to move us out. My past has the biggest effect on why I am the way I am now. It's affected me socially. I can't even communicate with normal people. It holds me back from a lot of things. I hate when Aubrey stays in her room all the time. She's such a social person. Some days my depression can be so bad that I don't even get out of bed. It's crippling. I think she enjoys the depression because I think she puts herself there so she can punish herself. My mom definitely doesn't understand my depression and how I'm feeling. I definitely understand what Aubrey needs. I live it every day. I have anxiety every day, but I learned how to put it in the place where it belongs. My mom is constantly telling me that I need to just move on and get over it and forget about the past. I don't want Aubrey to leave the past behind. I want it to define her so she can help other people. You say that you don't recall any of the sexual abuse, that you didn't see anything, you don't remember anything. Mm -mm. Okay, and so I, I, I asked them, when, when we were talking to you initially, to give us some examples of specific times that she could not not know. But you're saying that this happened um, at age eight. Tell her how she cannot not know that happened. Um, in the morning, when everything first first started happening, the very first time, and he raped me. I screamed for you and cried and begged you to come and screamed, and you finally came. And you asked, what's going on? And you just looked at me. And he said nothing. So you said, OK, then come to bed. And turned around and left. There's a point. He, is, he has been in your bedroom. And you are trying to fight him off. He told you to be quiet. But you say that this had never happened before. You started to scream that she came in, and at that point, where was he? On top of me, in my bed. He's in your bed on top of you. And she walks in. And what time is this? In the morning. It's in the morning. It's light in the room. Yeah. When she was <laughs> laying in bed crying, he was telling me that she had done something and he was having a conversation with her about what she had done wrong. And I told him that he needed to go to bed and leave her alone because he had her crying. She is saying you walked in the room and her stepfather, a man to whom she is not related, that has a criminal past, is a drunk, is abusing you physically and sexually, you walk in the room, open the door, and he is laying on top of your daughter. He wasn't laying on top of her that I can remember. You understand my frustration. So she says, you went back to bed. She laid there in shock. And then you cleaned up the bed, right? I took all the dirty sheets and threw them in and hid them at the bottom of my bed, at the bottom of my dirty clothes hamper, and threw my underwear away. And then I just laid there. What would cause you to not react? I did react. Um, you told him he to go back to bed. He, came, he did. I made sure he came back to bed. And that's one of the nights that I took probably one of the worst beatings that I had.